what I'd like to do in this video is go over this problem where we have a closed rigid tank that contains five kilograms of water at 60 degrees Celsius and has a quality of 0 0.7. There is heat transfer that occurs in the tank until the water is a saturated vapor at some higher pressure. And we're asked to figure out what the amount, what is the amount of energy transferred by heat. And we're also told that we're allowed to ignore changes in potential energy and kinetic energy. So first things first, I'm gonna start by drawing a small sketch of the system and identifying the important information. So the important information here is our mass M is equal to five kilograms. Our temperature, so T1, is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. And quality, which I'm going to denote by X, is equal to 0 0.7. I'm also going to draw a PV diagram to show what the states that what states that our system goes through. So right here, here's our pressure P, here's our volume V, and here is our vapor dome with at the top the critical point. So everything to the left of the critical point is going to be a saturated liquid. Everything to the right and above of the line of the critical point is going to be a saturated vapor, saturated gas. On a PV chart, we're going to have these lines of uh, constant temperature. So in our case, I'm just setting this up for our first state. We know that T1, so this is gonna be our temperature T1, is going to be equal to 60 degrees Celsius and we're told it has a quality of 0.7. Because it has a quality, we know it occurs somewhere in this vapor dome. I'm going to put it over here. And at this point, we have some volume V1 and we have some pressure P2, uh, P1. Now, there's heat transfer that occurs until the water is a saturated vapor. Now, the uh, this is in a closed rigid tank. It's not adding any mass. It's not expanding. So the volume stays the same and it just goes up to a higher pressure. So right there uh, will be our second state. So this will be state two. This is state one. And at this point, Here's the pressure we're at, here's some P2, and here's the volume we're at, V1. And what we can say from this is V1 is equal to V2. So the volume, it, the volume's not changing, the pressure increased. So let's just make sure we have everything. Uh, it starts at a quality of 0 0.7. Uh, it is heated, so it's gonna, the process is gonna go this way. Uh, it's heated until it's a saturated vapor. We got that at some higher pressure. So P2 is higher than P1. And what is the amount of energy transferred by heat? Okay, so what is the amount of energy transferred by heat? That sort of lends itself to our energy equation. So our change in kinetic energy plus our change in potential energy plus our change in internal energy is equal to Q which is the heat that comes into the system, minus W, which is the work that we do that leaves our system. If this equation, this equation doesn't make sense to you, you've never seen it before, you should look at one of my previous videos where I go over this equation in a little bit more depth. But in our case, in this problem, uh, change in kinetic and potential energy are zero because we're told we can ignore them. And W, the work that's done by our system, is also zero. There's no sort of work transfer out of our system uh, that is described in our problem statement. So what this does is this simplifies this equation to Q is equal to our change in internal energy. Now I'm gonna be I'm gonna try to be careful while I remember right here. I want to denote this as a capital U. I don't really know how to do that, but capital U is internal energy. In, 
order to use the charts in the back of a thermodynamic book, we need to use our specific, uh, specific internal energy. So U, this is a lowercase u, our specific, specific internal energy u is equal to this big the the big u so internal energy divided by mass so specific internal energy is just the uh, internal energy per per unit mass so I'm going to use this and I'm also going to use what a delta u is equal to so delta u is going to be equal to some final state so some u2 minus uh, initial state u1. I'm going to use these two identities to rewrite this in a slightly different way. This is going to be equal to q, the energy transfer that we're interested in, is equal to m times u2 minus u1. And from now on, when I'm writing u's, I'm writing the lowercase u's as specific internal energy. So these are lowercase and what I'm doing is I'm multiplying mass by this side and I'm using this uh, identity right here. This, this what a delta, what a change in U is equal to. So now how do we figure out what U2 and U1 is? Well, we're dealing with water. So our thermodynamic tables are a good place to go to. For me, this is table A2. I'm using the Fundamentals of Engineering Thermodynamics by Moran and Shapiro. And I've taken a little bit of their table out from the back of the book and I've truncated it. So really there's a lot of information between 50 degrees Celsius and zero degrees Celsius. And there's a lot of information over here of more properties that we're just not interested in for this problem. We're interested in the internal energy and the specific volume. So if we look at what state one is, State one, it's a bad one. Uh, state one has a temperature wh which is equal to 60 degrees Celsius. Okay, so state one seems like it's pretty straightforward. We know we're in this mixture region right here, so we're going to have to use the equation we have for a mixture. So uh, U1 is going to be equal to uh, I guess they call this UF for our saturated liquid plus our quality times the difference between uh, saturated vapor and saturated liquid. So this is going to be UG minus uh, UF. Now let's, let's work on getting these uh, different properties. So UF, we come down to our table right here. Our table is at 60 degrees and we're going to grab these two numbers right here. So these two numbers are straightforward. They have a unit of kilojoules per kilogram, like we talked about right here. And our saturated liquid UF is equal to 251.11 uh, kilojoules per kilogram. And our saturated vapor UG is equal to 2,456.6 kilojoules per kilogram. Now we're going to put these into this equation right here. So we're going to have 251.11 plus X is our quality. So 0.7 times the difference. So 2,456.6 minus 251.11. And we get that our specific internal energy at state one is equal to 1,794.95 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. So now let's try to figure out how to get state two. Well, we're not given a temperature, so we can't just look at a temperature, uh, look up in this table. So what are we gonna do? Well, we are given information about this volume. And volume one is the same as volume two. So what if we use the volume information we get 
at 60 degrees to figure out what its specific volume at state one is, then we know that V1 and V2 are the same. So we can then use the volume information to look up what its internal energy is at state two. Okay, so in case that didn't make sense, uh, we're, we're gonna need to use an equation uh, V1 is equal to Vf uh, plus the quality times Vg uh, minus Vf. And we're still, we're looking at our state one parameters right here. So we're looking at these two right here. And Vf is going to be equal to 1.0172 times 10 to the minus three uh, meters cubed over kilograms. And Vg is going to be equal to 7.671 uh, meters cubed per kilogram. Now, quick side note right here, this times 10 to the minus three we have to be careful when we use this particular book um, or these charts, this saturated liquid is given as the actual number we want times 10 to the third. So it's given as uh, 1000 times higher than it actually is. So for example, at T is equal to 50, we're given a saturated value of 1.0121 and this is really 1000 times higher so the real number is this uh, 0.0010121 we move the decimal point three points uh, to the left so this is really equal to 1.0121 times 10 to the minus 3 don't don't make the mistake of actually multiplying this by 10 to the third. Don't, just be careful with that. It's really times 10 to the minus third. Uh, anyway, when we, uh, bring, when we enter this into our equation, uh, V1 is equal to uh, 1.0172 times 10 to the minus three plus 0.7, again, this uh, quality right here, uh, times the difference of 7.671 minus, uh, my run out of the room, minus 1.0172 times 10 to the minus three. And if you perform this calculation, you get that this is equal to 5.37 meters cubed per kilogram. Now what we said before was this is equal to V1, which is also equal to V2. And this is good for us because what we're gonna do is we're gonna go to, we know that at V2 it's a saturated vapor. That was given in the description. So we go down our column of saturated vapor and we find out where 5.37 is gonna, gonna happen. So we move down here and 5.37 occurs somewhere right here. And this, if we're looking at rows, it occurs somewhere between 65 and 70 degrees uh, Celsius. Doesn't, we, we don't get 5.37 exactly, so we're gonna to need to interpolate in between values. Now, to interpolate in between values, we're gonna be interpolating from this row right here, or these two, these two columns right here, and a saturated, uh, vapor column right here because that's what we're dealing with. We are a saturated vapor at state two. So when we interpolate this, we're going to have, let's, uh, let's just 2469.6 minus 2463.1. Divided by 5.042 minus 6.197, and I got these. Uh, these 
are these two numbers right here. These two numbers right here are from this column. Now the order is important. Uh, I'm, I'm free to choose the top and the bottom whatever way I want. But now the order is important. So I'm, I don't know what U2 is. So it's going to be U2 minus uh, 2463.1 divided by this number, this uh, 5.37, 5.37 minus 6.197. And I'm, I want to solve for U2. And if I do that, I get U2 is equal to 2,467.75 kilojoules uh, per kilogram. So now we have all the information we need. We have U1, which is right here. We have U2, which is right here. And we can solve for Q. So Q is equal to M of U2 minus u1. q is equal to 5 because that's the number we have of our mass. Uh, it's equal to 2467.75 minus 1794.95 and this is going to be equal to 3364 kilojoules because right here you have five kilograms and right here you're gonna have a kilojoule per kilogram. Kilograms will cancel and you're left with the final answer of 3,364 kilojoules.